I want to talk about the infrastructure. Um, you heard a lot about AI, but the key question is what is behind it? Uh, and I think we all heard this, AI requires massive cloud infrastructure. Uh, if you look at numbers today, AI infrastructure already represents 28% of the data center power used in the US. And we are just getting started. So if you look at the projections, today we, um, the analyst estimates that it's going to grow 500% over the next four years. So to be honest, when I first saw this, I just didn't buy it. Uh, but it's already happening. That's a key story here. Um, and if you look at the power usage today, uh, the complete cloud infrastructure is using 5% of the US power generated. In four years, it's estimated that it's going to be 15. So one of the key things here is AI infrastructure deployments are actually inefficient. We believe they are inefficient because the software is not where it should be. And it's massively underused due to the lack of capable software. Um, but what are we talking about is the first question, I think. So there are different shapes of AI infrastructure. One is infrastructure for large training. And um, one question I have for you um, is who is actually doing large training here in this room? Can you raise your hands? So, to be honest, I don't see much with the lights, but I don't see any hands. And that's more or less what I'm expecting, because large training is actually done only by a dozens of companies worldwide. Um, so the kind of infrastructure you need here is really specific. You need high-performance clusters with high-speed interconnect. Um, and these clusters are taking up to 100,000 GPUs now. Uh, and um, they are used to train the foundational model we all, knew, we all use now. Now, the second question is who is doing fine tuning or small training in the room? Okay, I can see some hands uh, being uh, raised, um, and, and it makes sense. So we're expecting that most companies which are advanced in AI will be performing fine-tuning and small, small training in the coming years when the maturity evolves. In this case, what you need is slightly different. You probably need like between one, eight GPUs, or several machines in a small cluster. If you are doing inferencing, and who is doing inferencing in this room? Ah, actually, I would have expected more people to raise their hand because actually we are all going to do inferencing in the short term, either on, on device or using APIs. Um, it's, we are seeing it being integrated everywhere. And the infrastructure you need in this case is completely um, different. So you are going to have uh, something which fits in one single accelerator or GPU. Sometimes you need several GPUs to fit your model if it's large, and you are going to scale it horizontally as we did with the web with more machines. Um, and one of the key elements here is actually today where the power is mostly used for large trainings, but it's going to shift to inferencing. As uh, the maturity of the technology evolves, we're expecting the power to be used mostly in inferencing. So one of the key questions here is what can we do to improve the, the state of infrastructure and make something where we don't have underused GPUs? One of the key reasons why um, the setup is different for GPUs is because you cannot split a GPU. You don't want to split a GPU, actually, because you want the full power of the GPU when you do the inferencing process. Uh, so you need different techniques that I'm going to dive into now. Uh, we have two, two sites that we can optimize. One is hardware. The second one is software. 
And the focus today is going to be on real-time serverless inferencing. So I'm highlighting the real-time because it's a different problem compared to asynchronous uh, serverless inferencing. In the case of asynchronous serverless inferencing, you don't have high performance constraints. Um, you can wait several minutes or hours. In the case of real-time serverless inferencing, you need to have some, you, someone is waiting for an answer uh, in front of a screen or of a device, and it needs to be processed in one second. So you're looking at, at something where you have low latency, high performance hardware, and you want to have high efficiency without managing infra uh, infrastructure. Um, what we do at Koyeb is we built a global service platform for high performance fine tuning and inferencing. So I'm going to focus specifically on inferencing today. And I want to briefly show you how it works actually uh, and what we're speaking about. Um, and then I will dive into what is technically happening when we do these um, deployments. So I'm going to deploy a private auto scaling serverless endpoint with a LAMA 3.1 model. Let's get started. So we are going to go to koyeb.com, uh, to the URL we just saw, and we are going to deploy our inference server. So in this case, I'm going to use VLLM just for the sake of, of the demo. Um, and basically, what I'm going to do, um, I could pick a different GPU. I'm going to go with the, the standard GPU, which is preselected. I could also do inferencing on CPU. But the key point today is auto-scaling and how this works. So in our case, we let you deploy, uh, use different metrics um, for inferencing. The most relevant is the number of requests. And I'm just going to, to hit deploy, and I'm going to get a, a um, auto-scaling serverless endpoint for inferencing. Now I want to briefly show you what happens when you um, actually um, trigger auto-scaling. So this one is going to, uh, to, to start. It's going to take 30 uh, seconds. It's actually already started. Um, but I have another one, which is also already set up with a LAMA 3.1 model. It's an 8 billion parameter model. Um, it's running on A100 GPUs, and it's scaling between one and three instances. So if I look to right now, I have only one instance which is running, and the two other one are stopped, and you see that they were up and running at some point in the time. Um, if I... And what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate some load, and we will look together uh, what is happening. So this is simply connecting to uh, a machine which is uh, going to generate some load. And it's a live demo, not pre-recorded. Um, so I have this terminal where basically I can generate load. It's a, a benchmark tool. And um, as we can see, it's going to generate load on llm-in-production.koyeb.app uh, and generate uh, a test case with 3,000 prompts. So, um, and it's going to take a couple of seconds, and we will see basically new instance uh, um, starting uh, in real time depending on traffic. So if I go back here, uh, we see that the load is being generated. And what we do is we observe traffic, and every 15 seconds, we take a decision on whether we need to, to start new instances. And there is a reason why we don't do it for every request. Um, it's simply because it takes time to uh, create a new uh, um, instance. Um, and it would make something uh, flaky where some requests would hang. So, we're just seeing new uh, instances, instances coming up. Um, they are going to take a, a couple of seconds to be uh, fully healthy, but basically, the number of machines is going to adapt depending on the load. All right. Uh, now, back to what's happening behind the scene. I mentioned there is two sides that we can optimize. One is hardware. The second one is software. Um, the hardware, NVIDIA. Uh, I think we kind of have a problem because the reality of the market today is we have one single vendor. Uh, and I don't think anybody likes to have one single vendor uh, and one single option. 
um, it te tends to not uh, create a lot of diversity and innovation. So luckily, more diversity is coming to the market. So that's one axe of improvement. Uh, we are seeing all these vendors coming up with new generation of chips, which are uh, more efficient and designed for inferencing specifically. And basically, these new chips are going to create a lot of diversity, a lot of options which you can pick from. So you will be able to have accelerator cards with between 12 gigabytes of memory to up to 256 of gigabytes of memory. Uh, so if you look at the largest models, you'll be able to fit them in, in a couple of GPUs. Um, and if you want uh, to run a small model, you can also pick a small chip. Um, the memory speed is also going to, to be highly different between the old chips because all these chips are designed for different purposes and you'll be able to pick between a, a, a memory which is uh, relatively slow, you know, several hundreds of gigabytes per second. Uh, it's quite fast, but slow at the same time, and up to terabytes per second. Um, and finally, all of these chips are fundament have fundamentally different architectures, with some which are taking a, a couple of thousand of watts, and some which are 600 watts, 1,000 watts per chip. So we're expecting this to increase performance on one hand or to reduce cost and actually do both. Um, so you're going to be able to run larger models for the, the same cost um, or have something more cost efficient. Uh, to make this happen, actually, we also need software. Um, so there is two key components in inferencing. One is the inference server, and the second one is how do you deal with distributed inference and how do you scale horizontally. On the inference servers, um, one key topic uh, when it relates also to the chip makers is you need inference servers which are efficient with these new chips. So right now, the chips are kind of worthless uh, in a lot of cases, because the software is simply not working. So you have a great design, uh, theoretical peak performance, which is high, but the inference server doesn't work with it. But luckily, we have people working on it. Um, Steve just mentioned uh, something which is going to help. Um, and we expect this to improve. Um, today on the inference server, like you probably have one mature, really mature software, which is uh, the one from NVIDIA and you have new projects like VLM, which are coming up. Um, if you look at it, VLM is not even two years old, um, so it's going to, to significantly improve. Um, and finally, the last key topic is how do you deal with distributed inferencing? So there is two things. Uh, we just saw to scaling in action, and scale to zero is the same problem. Uh, you want the infrastructure to automatically adapt to demand, and the key problem we have right now is how fast can we boot an inference server? So how fast can we move from a model stored in our registry to, um, to it being running in an inference server? The technical problem is you need to move over 100 of gigabytes, several, sometimes like several, several hundreds of gigabytes of um, data, of weights, uh, into your accelerator card, and you need to transfer there, them and to load them before serving a single request. So if you look at it from scratch, the call book is going to take several minutes from zero. You, you will need to bring up all the components of the stack. So typically, a Bermel machine is going to take several minutes to start, Copying the model from the registry to your machine is going to take also several minutes. Uh, bringing up the virtualization engine is going to take several seconds, and the inference server, uh, depending on the size of, of the model, might take several minutes too. Luckily, there are simple um, optimization here that we can already implement. Permanent machine uh, startup is not so, so much a problem. You can preemptively start them. You can cache the models, um, and this is going to, to give you several minutes. It's actually one of the key components everyone is using today. But you still have two problems, like how fast can you boot the inference server? Um, and this is actually um, 
memory problem. If you look at it, what is happening is we have these large files with uh, model weights, and we need to move them to the accelerator count. So there are two techniques which are used to reduce this time. One is snapshotting, so you can snapshot the, the memory to restore it faster, and the second one is model hot swap. Um, but technically, model hot swap is actually, in a way, similar. It's uh, a memory optimization. We believe in snapshotting um, because memory snapshotting is actually what is already used today with CPUs. Um, and what we want as a service provider is to have uh, a memory snapshot of the model and move it at line rate to the accelerator count. Because we don't really care what's, what is happening. We want an optimized uh, layout for the model, the target memory layout, and we want to move it in a couple of milliseconds, ideally, to the accelerator count. So, this already works on CPU. It takes between 100 and 200 milliseconds to cold start on a CPU because you can snapshot the memory and restore it. Um, and we expect this to be kind of the, the future of uh, auto-scaling, also for accelerator counts, when all the accelerator counts support it. Um, if you look at numbers, basically the theoretical limit uh, for PCI Express Gen 5 is 500 gigabyte per second. So there is some room um, where we can make this happen in one second. But actually today, there is a lot of things which we don't really care about, which are happening in the inferencing process and in the process of um, booting up uh, an inferencing server. So my take here is like low latency inferencing requires optimization at all layers. Um, it's not a um, single point which needs to be optimized, and it's actually what the industry is working on. Uh, I think we are all working on different um, sides, layers of the stack. And there is two key elements um, here. Basically, right now, apps need to provide hints to infrastructure, uh, especially for caching. Uh, if you are not using a standard model, if you are using a fine-tuned model, um, we cannot know when you will need it. And as one of the longest processes is to make the copy, uh, the best way to optimize this is that the app hints the infrastructure when, um, it's going to be, uh, um, when the model is going to be requested. Um, and finally, like the last point is um, I believe that efficiency will dramatically increase next year, um, when we see all the competition and all the work which is being done. So um, you should expect the price of inferencing to significantly drop, probably by 10 times in um, the coming year, and which means you can also use larger models, and you can anticipate that you'll be able to use them in the coming years for the same cost. So the limitation is probably more your imagination than purely the infrastructure. And that's it for me today. Um, if you want to get involved on, on, on any of this work, uh, we have ideas, so don't hesitate to reach out.